I have some ground beef. And I'm thinking, what do I want for dinner with ground beef? I don't really want a hamburger. Just had that for lunch the other day. There's a lot of things you could do with it. I just had tacos. I just had this. I made meatballs last week. I mean, I'm looking for new ideas. And spaghetti? I actually have not had spaghetti in a while. So I thought, hmm, what about making spaghetti on top of my spaghetti squash? Because I have this too. I have this and this. Let's do it. So when the last video I did with one of these spaghetti squashes, because I can't cut these in half, and a lot of people, they cut them in half and then they bake them. Um, but I found another way to do it. I used to boil them and cook them that way. But sometimes I would overcook them. So I stabbed the heck out of this with a knife so that it releases uh, some pressure from this. And I found a way that you could actually bake it 430 minutes, done, cut it, easy peasy. So we're doing that first. The oven's been preheated at 400, so this is going to go in. That's the first thing because it takes the longest, okay? So the ingredients that I'm going to use is very similar to what I would do if I was doing spaghetti, but a little different because I'm going to do something a little different for this uh, spaghetti squash kind of spaghetti dish. I have to come up with a name for this. I hope I do before the end of this recipe. All right, I have green peppers. I have red peppers, some mushrooms. I have crushed garlic. It's, um, they're each little cube, it's frozen, um, is equivalent to a clove of garlic. So we want three cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna put three of these in. Um, I have frozen my onions and uh, because you want to chop up uh, one onion. So one onion goes in here, chopped up. And there you have it. We've got a little bit of tomato sauce. Then we're gonna put some seasoning in there as we go along. I have a large pan for cooking everything together in here, the hamburger and the vegetables. And uh, since the onion is already cut up. I don't have the flame on yet because I don't want things to start cooking while I'm chopping, but um, I'm probably halfway through. I'm going to start, I'll put the heat on and then I'll start adding everything because it's a little hard for me to chop and uh, watch the hamburger and stir that up as it's cooking with the vegetables. I'm just slicing these mushrooms. And uh, you probably, if you want a measurement for the mushrooms, I would say a cup of mushrooms. That's fair. You could do more, you could do less. All right, so I've got the mushrooms in there. I've got the onions in there. I'm gonna add, cut up the red peppers. So these are just kind of like, drop one small pieces i wouldn't call maybe call them diced chopped i don't know i'm going to take the green one do the same <coughs> green onions uh, green peppers i said green onions again all right so we got all that in there I'm going to now cut up some tomatoes. All right, I have the vegetables in there. I'm going to turn the flame on at this point. That's about a medium flame. And now I'm going to add the ground beef, um, organic grass fed ground beef. This is what is recommended when you're on the keto diet that you buy uh, organic grass-fed meat. You buy or, try to buy organic anything. Uh, it's better that way. 
And I'm just going to break it up as I put it in here, and that's going to cook with the vegetables. So you just break it up into little tiny pieces, and then you could break it up even more as it's, while it's cooking. So I'm just mixing all this up while everything cooks together. I think at this point we can start seasoning, doing a little seasoning. Did I tell you I added some avocado oil in there before I put the vegetables and meat in there? Okay, I'm telling you now in case I didn't. Seasoning. Of course, oh, you know what I forgot? Uh, let's get in the garlic with all of this. Again, um, I'm going to use three of these, which is the equivalent of three, there's one, two, three, equivalent of three garlic cloves, okay? TJ's 21 Seasoning Salute. It's my all-purpose seasoning. It has so many things in here that are, makes it so easy to uh, flavor. This is my Italian seasoning. Again, it has a thyme, mar marjoram, you know, so about a teaspoon's worth of Italian seasoning. And let's add some salt. This is Himalayan salt. A pinch of this and a pinch of that. A little pepper. Mix that up. Hamburger's cooking, but it's not fully, there's still red meat in here. And you want your hamburger fully cooked before adding the tomato sauce, which we're going to add in a minute. Now, if you really, really want to give this a little bit of a punch, um, I'm going to add just a pinch of crushed red pepper. You don't have to do this. Just a pinch. All right, this looks pretty brown. And now we could add the tomato sauce in here. For the tomato sauce, uh, this amount I would do one can, which is usually eight ounces, and this is 15 ounces. So I'm only going to use half of this, or at least see how much. I might use all of it. I'm only going to use half. Okay, because this is plenty. Remember, you're not doing, we're not making spaghetti, okay? So we don't need a lot of sauce. That's the difference. At this point, I'm just going to turn the flame way down as low as it gets. Very low flame. I'm going to put a lid on it, and I just want that to cook while the spaghetti squash is cooking. It'll allow the flavors to, you know, blend together with the sauce. I was just looking in the cabinet in case I wanted to add any more seasoning and stuff to it. And I found uh, sherry cooking wine. So if you have any um, cooking wine, it could be white, it could be red. I'm going to add that into this mixture because I really love the taste when you add wine into something like this, especially, I, I do it, uh, that was a little bit too much, yike. I would do, what, a, about a fourth of a cup, what would I do? That's a, that's a fourth of a cup. I would do, a, a, that might be too much. Do an eighth of a cup, and that should be plenty. I probably just dumped in a fourth of a cup right there, but hey, what can I say? This has been simmering for like 10 minutes. I think it needs to be stirred on occasionally. It's one of these dishes where you just want to keep stirring it. All right. I 
tested the spaghetti squash, put a fork in there, it's nice and tender, which means it's done. And now it's ready for me to cut it in half. Just take it out of here, put it over here. Let's hope I can cut it in half. Let's see, get closer to you. My nice drawer, which one do I want? This will do. <laughs> All right, should have had my knife picked out for you. So we're just gonna cut this in half, okay? It's, it's hot, so you need your mitten, your oven mitten. Just gonna cut this in half. Oh, it is easy to cut. Don't you love it? You don't have to try to cut it before it goes in the oven. Of course, when you get down to the stubborn part at the end, it doesn't wanna cut. So you just struggle away. Okay. Good enough. As you know with spaghetti squash, you need to scoop out all the seeds and hold this and just scoop out all those seeds. No need to fork it. <laughs> yeah, let's fork it. All right, so now we just do this with our fork. One down, the other to go. Voila! It's forked, it's ready to go. And now we can pour this on top. Let's open up the lid. And now that we've got our spaghetti squash ready, let us pour the meat right on top of this here. Very beautiful. Get all those vegetables and get the get the meat and the sauce right on top of that. This makes a very good um, table presentation. The other thing that you can actually do is um, just put the squash, take it out of the out of the shell, put it on the plate, pour the the sauce mixture over that and serve it just like you do spaghetti. Um, that's another way to do it, but again, this makes a really nice table presentation. There's one little thing that we're going to add before we're completely done with this. And, and you don't have to do this. I'm bending down so, I can, so you can see this and me. Um, but I'm gonna add some mozzarella cheese on top and Parmesan cheese on top and then I'm going to put it back in the oven for 10 minutes. That's it. And then we're done. I think it's going to taste a lot yummier. Okay. You want to watch me put my mozzarella on top of these puppies. They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful all by themselves. But you know what? They're going to be even more pretty when they come out of the oven baked in with the mozzarella and Parmesan cheese on top. So we've got, um, just sprinkle it on top. No measurement. Don't ask me for a measurement. I'm not gonna give you a measurement. And uh, sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top of that. And there. I should have done that in a in the baking dish that I'm going to put in the oven. So uh, I'll get that out and put it in the oven. Again, 10 minutes, okay? Quick tip I sometimes say when I do these cooking videos is you've got some leftover stuff, sauce or anything, and I have leftover of the meat, vegetable, spaghetti sauce, whatever we're calling it. So I put a label on it, put it in the refrigerator, and I date it. The date is on here as well and that goes in the refrigerator. I have just taken this out of the oven. Let's have you look at the beauty. Aren't they pretty? All right, so they definitely need to cool. And uh, once they do, it's going to make a delicious dinner. 
I hope you like it. You want to see me taste it, don't you? It's so hot. <laughs> okay, just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay. I knew this was going to be good. You guys are going to love me. You will love me for this. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. I'd love to get your comments. Join my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, my subscribe to updates on my website, all that good stuff that I always forget to promote at the end of the video. So, um, anyway, bon appetit. Enjoy.